Now that 21 Pilots are done with their six show festival run in South America and Mexico, we once again sit in silence and wait for 21 Pilots to make their next move while looking back at these six shows and figuring out how they fit with inside the Dima storyline because a lot happened during these shows. Of course, you have the main narrative that everyone has talked about, which is Tyler in the blurry paint shirt, with Night 1 being down to the sleeves, Night 2 recessing back to his collarbone, Night 3 still there with a gray shirt, Night 4 going up the sleeves and going down a bit more, Night 5, oh my, there's a lot of blurry paint, and Night 6, the final show, recessing back upward. You had the whole Tyler death drop and resuscitation during Heavy Dirty Soul, bringing Tyler back to life. On Night 5 of these shows, you had a lot of things go on there. You had the ride sunglasses come back. You had the jumpsuit visuals from Bandito come back, which included a very creepy eye. And they were messing around with the lighting on night five. J and during jumpsuit, instead of Tyler's red light, he was lit by blue. And you had Tyler channel his blurry face sign more and perform way more aggressive and just mean mugging everyone. There was a lot of stuff that happened on night five, such and even Tyler and Josh coming on stage with the mass in Psy era sunglasses and doing their bow as if they were starting the takeover slash icy tour. A lot has happened and my friends, I think this is Tyler and Josh giving us a little appetizer to what's to come. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, depending on when you're watching this. How's it going, guys? First off, hope you're having a good day today. Hope your day's going well and hope it continues to go well. Let's go ahead and talk about the Demapetizer. If you ask people if there was a story in these shows, the many people who have been analyzing these shows for lore will tell you that the storyline they were trying to tell throughout these six is Tyler versus Blurryface, Tyler versus his insecurities, the Banditos versus the Bishop, all through Tyler because of how the paint would fluctuate and similar to how mental health works and how there are days where you are just beaten up and your blurry face becomes stronger and has more power over you. There are days where you're fine, that blurry paint becomes less and it's just around one part of you. And there are days where you just feel eh and just, you know it's there, but it's not enough to bother you or really ruin your day. A lot of people say that that's what Tyler's shirt was reflection of is just his battle with his own mental health throughout all of these events, and especially because the first couple shows, gonna be honest, they had a lot of issues technical wise, whether that be with the cryogenics person electrocuting Tyler, whether that be with the backing tracks not working, whether that be the power going out and everyone having to leave the stage. They could not catch a break in show two and three and I felt really, really bad. But 21 Pilots, that's just their thing. That's their live band and they communicate through Tyler. Maybe the blurry face paint on his shirt was signaling, yeah, no, nah, I'm just having the war with my insecurities right now. And really, this is where we're going with the next 21 Pilot album, considering we've already seen the thing in the outside music video with Tyler seizing the empty vessel of Keons, because Keons is now an empty vessel because he's been murdered to death by the bishops. So we see Tyler sees Keons and boom, set Dima on fire from the inside. And at the end of the outside music video, presumably Tyler and Josh reconnect with the banditos and they are going straight to Dima to overthrow the bishops, or at least try to. And maybe Ebony between the events of the outside music video where we are today, the bishops have gotten the fire under control. They've re got their bearings and they're like, oh, we probably should stop Tyler considering he's the only live vessel who's able to be seized. We know that from the glowing red eyes in the stressed out music video, as well as some very local. And that fact has been confirmed by Mark from Real Bear Media, as well as from Tyler as well. So presumably the bishops take over Tyler and that's the war we're seeing here. Tyler just trying to fight off the bishops night after night after night, some nights he's they're winning, some nights they're not winning. And this eternal war of Tyler versus the bishops, yourself versus your own mental health, is something that Tyler could be alluding to where the next album is going. Of course, we know where the next album is going. Tyler has said it himself after Scale Nights got released, like very close after Scale Nights was released. I go back to this Billboard interview from 2021 where Tyler says, talking about Redecorate specifically, I hope that people understand the, re the reason why I'm ending it with Redecorate is that we're heading in another direction after this. That is an intentional hint at what we are trying to do next. It's not really a cliffhanger, but it is a precursor and lyrically it's an important song for me. 
A lot of people have interpreted this as we are going in a darker direction, a la Redecorate. Kind of going back to that trench style, like Tyler was trying to say at the final show in Brazil with the shaven head, the jumpsuit style clothing, the cuts on his face, alluding that we're going back to that kind of style of production with him and Paul Meany. We're going out of this whole lockdown thing. We're heading in a darker tone. Now, does this explain the heavy dirty soul death drop of resuscitation? Does this explain why we returned to the trench era visuals during jumpsuit? Why there was a blue light on Tyler? Why Tyler was acting more aggressive? Kinda? However, a lot of people act, see this a whole thing as little hints that we're going to be getting more Clancy journals soon. And considering we are coming up on the anniversary of the account termination page showing up on, on dmaorg.info backslash all those numbers that were going to bet to the second year anniversary of Blurryface tweeting the name of the record or scaled nicely and all this. A lot of people are anticipating that we're due for some Clancy letters sometime soon, which will explain the events of what immediately happens after the outside, which will explain what happens during the AC tour and maybe go more in depth about the battle of Clancy versus the bishops being seized, like we see that Clancy talk about in the last, the latest one we have, talking about the blood red vision, the out of body experiences, and the red and rider in the river, which is Nico, as we know. Now, something I want to discuss, an interesting theory I read is that for last show in Mexico, there was no official stream for the concert. You had people streaming on their phones, but as far as the concert being streamed to some sort of TV network, nothing official. And I see people say that maybe that Tyler didn't go with an original plan, that Tyler decided, you know what, it's not being officially streamed, I'm going to tone it back. I'm going to do what I've done this past couple of other nights and not go with the big plan that I had. To which a lot of people were expecting a blurry face era black tank top, the ride sunglasses being more prominent, the red beanie being more prominent, the emotional roadshow style suit, and of course, the red contacts. However, my big thing against this idea is that we still had streams through Instagram, through TikTok, through other means, and Tyler, I'm pretty sure, is pretty well aware of that because these images fly around the click. The videos go, they circulate everywhere. We can get this footage without an official stream, so there would be no reason for Tyler Joseph to, turn, to tune everything down because we would have ways to get this information anyway. And of course, what about the idea that it was just a very cruel April Fool's Day prank and that it was all just one big lead up, which honestly, I wouldn't put past Tyler because he would seem like the kind of guy who would do that, overanalyzing things so much. And of course, the click has an over tendency to overanalyze any little thing. Like, he said this one tiny thing in the song, let's go overanalyze it to oblivion. Oh, he had tape on his shoe for one particular day in this festival, and it's a white piece of tape that's alluding to next era's colors. We have a tendency to overthink, so he's like, maybe I'm just going to make them overthink about this paint. I'm having him overthink about this death drop. I'm gonna bring back some visuals for no reason. He was genuinely upset that things were not going well. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, I'm just gonna put it in the show. I'm just gonna put it in the show so people can talk about it. It's an idea. Is it probable? Honestly, yeah, it's probable because it's Tyler we're talking about. We not put it past him. However, I do think that there were lore elements to put it up higher. So it's like, there's lore, there's April Fool's Day, or it's nothing at all, which I know is a possibility that people are going to say, because it's a festival. It's not a main 21 Pilots thing. It's not AC Tour, it's not Takeover. It's not Bandito Tour, it's not Emotional Roadshow, whatever. It's not a 21 Pilots gig. It's a everyone festival gig where people aren't necessarily there to see you. Now, 20 Pilots, we're headlining these festivals, so that could be a different thing. That could be a different thing altogether compared to the summer festivals they were doing last summer, where 20 Pilots 
would not be headlining. They would perform under acts like Metallica, who would be headlining that villain. That's such a weird fever dream. My two favorite bands, just 20 on Pilots, then Metallica on the same stage later on. Very weird. But you have the people that were like, yeah, it's festival. It really doesn't count. It just falls in this weird middle ground ether, to which possible. Everything is possible, everything is not possible until proven otherwise by Josh, uh, Tyler, Mark from Real Bear Media, and or Clancy Journal, which again, many people are expecting us to get something quite soon, and I hope so too, so that we have some things to talk about in the near future. But overall, the, the purpose of these six shows, besides stepping in for Blink-182, was to give us content to hold us over for the bigger project that's coming up, the end of the Dima storyline, where everything, let's be honest, and not everything's going to be revealed, we'll still be theorizing after the Dima storyline's long ended and Tyler publishes a book about the ins and outs, and we'll just point out things like, yeah, this one shirt I wore at a festival, yeah, no, that meant nothing all along, I just let people go along with it. Oh, this shoe, I just like these shoes, and I just wore it one day, so on and so forth. And that'll be a day when it happens, but these six shows was just to give us something to do during this period, during this inevitable lull period that we're going to go back into because once again, now we just sit in silence. But let me know what you think down in the comments section below. I'd love to know your thoughts as well. Until then, I'm going to bed. It's 1.16 in the morning and I've been up since 4.30 a.m. It's fine. I'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye. Egg and I, more importantly, have a good day, and I'll see you later.